वेलकम एवरी वन टू द सेशन ऑफ डिस्क्रिमिनेंट एनालिसिस इन द इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैड जस्ट स्टार्टेड विद एन ओवर व्यू ऑफ वॉट इज डिस्क्रिमिनेंट एनालिसिस एंड वॉट इज द यूटिलिटी ऑफ डिस्क्रिमिनेंट एनालिसिस वाई इट इज यूज राइट एंड देर वी सेड दैट देर आर टू बेसिक टेक्निक्स विच आर यूज फॉर द सिमिलर पर्पोज ऑफ वॉट डिस्क्रिमिनेंट एनालिसिस डज सो वॉट इज डिस्क्रिमिनेट एनालिसिस डज डिस्क्रिमिनेट एनालिसिस बेसिकली डिस्क्रिमिनेट्स बिटवीन two or three groups right multiple groups and <coughs> gives us a, a, a score that helps us to separate these groups uh, uh, in a proper way right so let's say there are several cases where a dependent variable right dependent variable uh, is uh, uh, let's say in a categorical uh, uh, scale right Ca has been measured in a categorical way and uh, the independent variables are rather in uh, are there in a continuous way continuous okay so when this condition occurs to us so that is the right time when we use discriminant analysis or there is another technique which is also used for the same called logistic regression a special case of regression logistic regression okay so <coughs> the only difference between the logistic regression and the uh, discriminant analysis is that the discriminant analysis is although it gives a uh, uh, it takes multiple uh, uh, you know categorical variable uh, values for example let's say there are three groups 1 2 3 it can take that and it can even you know 3 4 it can give you a picture of how these groups are different from each other but on the other hand the logistic is generally applied for only cases uh, where there are two uh, possibilities 0 uh, and 1 yes or no kind of right uh, will happen or will not happen kind of a case but uh, uh, the 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 advantage of a logistic regression is that a logistic regression does not uh, uh, get affected by uh, the normality uh, you know if, if there is a violation of the normality of the data so violation of normality if it is still there logistic regression works well right but on the other hand if there is a normality dis uh, violation uh, discriminant analysis will uh, have uh, will show some problems okay but otherwise both the techniques are equally strong and powerful and uh, widely used right and uh, uh, so this is what it does so it has helped you it uh, helps us to find to discriminate between two or three groups right so we can say with, with the help of the independent variables with the uh, uh, with the help of the independent variables whatever coefficients or weights you get by including that you can create a score which we say the discriminant score the z uh, the score now that score helps us to uh, you know correctly say ki whether a new candidate or a new case that will come into the uh, uh, picture will fall into which group for example let's say there are four groups right so these groups there is a division on basis of certain uh, parameters these parameters are uh, the independent variables let's right? say so independent variable 1 independent variable 2 and goes on so it taking these values from the past suppose let's say as i said earlier there is a bank the bank has given loan to uh, people and some people have uh, defaulted the loan some people have given up uh, given the loan in the right time they, they have you know they have submitted their uh, emi or money so by taking these two people kind of people a a you know uh, a, uh, a discriminant score can be uh, calculated which is very similar to a regression only right so it goes on right so so when x1 x2 x3 are your independent variables so by taking this then the the weights or the coefficients by including those f coefficients what it does is it helps you to suppose you get a new client or a new person who has come approach the bank for a loan then by placing his values the x1 x2 x3 and the uh, coefficients it can uh, using the coefficients it can say ki whether the new person would be a defaulter or a very uh, a productive uh, you know uh, uh, person for the bank so that is the basic utility so let us take an example so discriminant analysis has is very popular and highly utilized in all kinds of financial markets 
you know even in uh, deci where decisions have to be taken uh, in a case of uh, like in a categorical value, uh, uh, way uh, whether I will do it, I will not do it you know kind of a thing. So, this is a case which I have brought an example. Now, this case what it does is basically it explains that there are two types of skull. Now, skull this is a you know very interesting case uh, what has happened is there are two types of skulls one found from the area of uh, Sikkim and uh, the you know cl close by area of that the Tibet zone right. And another kind was the if you see type A and type B skulls right the other one was from the Lahasa district right another place right. So, we are not interested in the place. So, we are only uh, using it as a type A type B skill uh, skull. So, now the uh, the researcher wants to know right it has got 5 criteria. Now, this 5 criteria are is are its 5 independent variables. So, what are the independent variables the greatest length of the skull right the greatest horizontal breadth of uh, the skull that means, what is the width of the skull, the height of the skull, okay, the upper face length, then the cheek bone distance. Okay. So, these 5 uh, you know uh, uh, variables have been used and a equation has been built okay, with the help of the 32 skulls that were available to the researcher. Right. Now, he hopes that in the future suppose a new skull is found he could be able to discriminate and say whether this skull on basis of its uh, you know uh, uh, the measurements is it from the Sikkim zone Sikkim region or is it from the Lhasa region. Okay. So, it is a way of discriminating only correct. So, let us see how to do that. So, what are the two uh, uh, the two uh, questions that might be of interest are do the five measurements discriminate between the two assumed groups of skulls and can they be used to produce a useful rule for classifying the other skulls right that might become available okay so taking the 32 skulls right they have tried to form a as i said a group right and these two groups type a and type b and a discriminate score uh, uh, is to be built and on basis of that we will be able to decide ki whether it is uh, which kind of skull. Okay. So, as I said uh, as it is said if you can see discriminant analysis helps in classification, but when I say classification you might be uh, remembering uh, the, uh, the in the last to last somewhere we had discussed about cluster analysis. Cluster analysis was also an important tool to classify if I at that time I had said that cluster is basically used to classify. So, uh, then what is the difference between this cluster and discriminant? Cluster only creates groups when uh, it was not there right. So, cluster uncovers groups it, it develops the groups right from observations of initially unclassified data. Okay. On the other hand the discriminant analysis derives the rules uh, on basis of the already classified data right and now clubs the individuals or, or places the individual on, uh, on to the uh, right group according to its features, features or the independent variables right. So, <coughs> that is the basic difference. So, how do you do it? I have just brought in example with through how to uh, you know to do it through SPSS. There are few values which are very important when you talk about discriminant. Now, discriminant uh, one thing is there is something called a discriminant uh, score or a you know uh, uh, disc, uh, cut off score also right cut off score. Now, once you have uh, let us say uh, created a data and you have uh, you have you have uh, decided a cut off value let us say the cut off value is let us say somewhere let us say 0.6 right. Now, the cut off value is 0.6 then you say there are two groups and on basis of this cut off value we will say ki whether the uh, guy or the person will fall into which category Achha, ok group 1 or group A or group B A or B if it is let us say it is greater than 0.6 it is A let us say it is if it is less than it is less than then suppose uh, group B if it is high then group A. So, to find the cut off value is also equally very important for the researcher. So, how does he find the cut off value we will see that. 
<coughs> okay. So, uh, so first of all, let's go through a scatter uh, plot. Just we will decide uh, make a scatter plot of the data, right? Uh, taking all the matrix variables, you know, the uh, horizontal breadth, height, upper face length, face width. And set the markers on basis of the assumed type of skull, type A or type B. So, the researcher knows ki let us say skull uh, number 3, let us say, is from Sikkim, right? And the features were these, okay? Skull number uh, 7 was from, let us say, Lhasa, and these were the features. So, he knows. So, he has uh, set markers by the type of skull, okay? Now, if you look at this diagram, Although uh, generally uh, it is not very clear, one cannot uh, be very specific from a diagrammatic representation to at least I believe that, right. So, uh, what you do is, uh, if you look at this, it allows us to assess the group separation in two dimensions, right, group A and B. It seems to suggest that face breadth, it says, from uh, between the outermost points, greatest length uh, of the skull and uh, the 154, one, it looks, it's like a correlation, right. So, correlation. So, 1, 5, 4, 1, uh, fi, uh, f, uh, this is the uh, cheekbone distance, the cheekbone distance is this one, 5, then you have 1 and then you have 4. These 3, if you see, let us look at them and if you see the, 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 the data, the, 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 you know, the, uh, the type of skulls, right. They are clearly, uh, they are, there is a separation, there is a separation. But in other cases, in this case, for example, it is superimposed. So, when uh, the most important thing is discrim in discriminant analysis is that suppose there is a too much of, uh, there is a little overlap, then we will say that it discriminates well. But what if, what if, if the data is highly, uh, you know, uh, uh, superimposed? So, so, if this is the area, then it is too much of super superimposition. In this case, we cannot say that it is discriminating well, right. Similarly, when data uh, in suppose this is uh, you know uh, like the data is there and suppose another kind of data is let us say this is what it is showing right. Suppose it is interspersed in between. So, then you cannot discriminate there has to be a clear pattern of discrimination. So, let us see how uh, it is being done. Okay. So, we use the Fisher's linear discriminant function. So, Fisher's uh, linear discriminant function is uh, I think this is what uh, uh, is the one the z right. So, we have this z value and we are going to measure this z value right. So, with the help of this z value, once you have the z value, then uh, it becomes easier for you right to uh, know ki which group it comes to. Okay. Let us see. Now, how do you do that? So, uh, in the SPSS for example, I am using SPSS. So, if you go to uh, classify, analyze, then classify and then there is a discriminant, right. So, uh, once you go there, you can say what is the minimum number of, uh, you know, your grouping variable. So, in case, uh, let us say, there are two groups to be formed, only Sikkim and Lahasa. So, two groups, right. So, one and two, but suppose there are more than two groups, there could be three groups also. So, the highest value would be three, the lowest value would be one, right. So, that would differ. So, suppose it is four, then one and four, but remember, uh, should not, you should not be taking too many, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, groups also, because you can understand why to, I am saying, if you take too many groups, the uh, the discriminating power will be very complex and will uh, will not be very clear, it will in one way reduce. Okay. So, now we have taken the means, uh, this is a Fisher's function coefficient uh, and the unstandardized. There is a difference between the standardized and the unstandardized. The standardized is good because uh, in some cases, the standardized helps us to uh, compare. But unstandardized is uh, helpful also because it feeds in the raw data and gives you a very, it is very easy to calculate, right? That is the basic difference. So, once we have taken this grouping variable and the independent variables, there are two methods. So, either we uh, put in all the uh, variables together simultaneously. <coughs> so, uh, when you take simultaneously, the uh, obviously the system will take it uh, together and then uh, you know give you a coefficient. But in there is another way also where if you can use like regression, you can use it in a stepwise method. So, stepwise method what it does is basically in the stepwise method it calculates it how does it select a variable 
it selects the variable on basis of the the distance the mahalanobis distance right so the uh, mahalanobis distance right m uh, d square we say d square so mahalanobis distance uh, is the uh, is the internal the algorithm is built uh, on that way right the higher the uh, um, uh, suppose there are different values let us say 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.7, 1.4, 1.2, 0 0.8. Now, what it does is it, it tries to pick up the one with the highest value right and first feeds into the system right and then slowly uh, next uh, it goes on right. So, <coughs> So, the, if you look at the group statistics, now these are the descriptive variables, the mean and the standard deviation, right, for the Sikkim uh, people and the Lhasa people. Now, this will give you an idea ki what is the actually difference between the Sikkim and the Lhasa people, but it does not say anything beyond this, it does not talk about the significance of the difference, right, it does not do that. So, and uh, here our interest is to not to see uh, look into these things, but rather we want to see ki is there any way or is there uh, you know uh, out of these 5 variables, which variable or which variables are the ones which are able to discriminate between the 2 groups more powerfully. Now, for example, suppose we had 5 we said right. So, uh, so higher the let us say w higher the w value generally that has will that will have the larger impact ok. So, uh, within group covariance within group now uh, when I talk about covariance matrices ok uh, 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 let us see this. So, what we are basically doing it is giving you a log determinants in the next table right. So, this is the values greatest length of skull, uh, greatest uh, you know breadth of all these are given to you and in the next table which is more important now the, because the earlier table is not that requirement to us. So, this 2 tables now uh, log determinant means uh, it has been uh, the log it has been converted the natu the ranks and uh, natural logarithms of the determinants are given to you that means the original values have been converted into a log value right and the test results are given. So, although this test results right uh, what they are saying uh, they are measuring the equality of covariances these differences are not statistically significant. Now, how did they know from this value from this value if you see 0.249 it suggests that because since you might be testing at 95 percent confidence level or 99 percent confidence level if it is more than uh, uh, the uh, the significance level then uh, the uh, alpha then in that case you reject uh, you accept the null hypothesis. So, here our null hypothesis is that there is no difference. So, these differences are not statistically significant had they been less than 0 0.05 you would have said there is a statistical difference there is a significant difference between the uh, values, but it does not happen here it is not happening right. So, now uh, now coming to this uh, table now this table if you see there are 2 uh, important uh, uh, values given to you one is the Eigen value which it is explaining here is 0.93 right and uh, the uh, canonical correlation. Now, what is this Eigen value? The Eigen value in this case in a case of discriminant analysis is nothing but the ratio of within within uh, sorry the ratio of not within the ratio of between by between by within ok. The ratio of between by within between group sum of squares to within sum of squares right. So, if you remember I had also explained you in a way to remember that within is generally we talk about the error it consists of the error right. So, the explained this is the explained this is the unexplained ok. So, this value the higher this again value is the larger is the uh, you know explanation of the variables. So, so the canonical uh, what it says here is it uh, um, it is this criteria that is the criteria that is maximized in the discriminant function analysis. So, if it is 0 0.93 that means it is there is a possibility that it is there are some the variables are uh, clearly uh, discriminating uh, the between the 2 groups group 1 and group 2 let us say and what is this canonical correlation canonical correlation if you remember just like our we had uh, <coughs> r square 
<coughs> in regression we used to have r square but th that was the case of regression here we cannot use that because uh, here our variables are not metric in nature they are not in metric form they are one in uh, the dependent is in categorical and the independent variable is in metric so here that is why we use the canonical correlation but the if you the understanding remains the same for example in this case 0.694 or 0.7 let's say 0.7 is my co canonical correlation you square it you square it and when you square it suppose it is 0.4 uh, sorry 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 0.49 let's say so 49% of the explanation is happening with the help of this independent variables okay this is what it says okay ha huh. so if you look at this it says that uh, it has taken the exact score point of 694 so that is why it is coming 48% of the variance in the discriminant function scores can be explained by the group differences which is automatically uh, uh, impact of the measurement variables only right so that's what i was saying how the measurement variables are impacting it okay now next is if you look at there is something called a wills lambda now this is very important again now wills lambda is a uh, is a process uh, is is used is a test provides a test for assessing the null hypothesis that in the population the means of the five measurements are the same in the two groups what does it say wills lambda says that there is no difference between the means of the uh, 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 five measurements right in both the groups that is the sikkim group and the lhasa group for example in this case and the lambda coefficient is defined as the proportion of the total variance uh, you can understand this way uh, the lambda wills lambda is nothing but within variance divided by the total variance so within variance divided by the total variance so if you uh, if that means what if my if if and i had told you that within is something which is unexplained right so if i am having un, my lambda value of high, high a high lambda value so what does it indicate it indicates that there is no clear pattern or no no clear discriminating power in the case in this case right so if you have the lower the uh, lambda value the better is the discriminating uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, the ability to discriminate uh, the groups right so <coughs> it says the lambda coefficient is 0.518 and it is significant right in this case so uh, now if it is significant that means what is the null hypothesis that the the five measurements are the same right in the two groups so that is getting rejected that is getting rejected in this case no there is no significant difference in the uh, there is uh, there is a significant difference in the two groups that means right because uh, the null hypothesis was that they are the same so they are not the same now <laughs> okay now something coming to this classification coefficient right now this uh, classification function coefficient is uh, uh, generally used uh, uh, for you know uh, remember when you have uh, a, a two groups the number of function coefficients you can develop is only one because the rule says the function the function coefficients or the values you have uh, is al always ng or number of groups minus of 1 this is the formula so suppose you have a three group so then you have two function uh, coefficients okay now you can see this uh, right this function canonical discriminant function coefficients you will get only one right so if you have more then uh, uh, accordingly it has to be ng minus 1 right so now the question is you have got the classification function coefficient now how can i use this now this is used to create our z value for example now z value in this case generally you don't uh, this this uh, uh, you know uh, uh, thing is not given in most of the uh, you know uh, it's not explained uh, in a better way now how it has happened now this is how it has been done actually now if you see if you look at the values if you look at the values here of the sikkim and the lhasa the difference between these two the difference here right is used to calculate the z score right 
is equal is you to calculate the the z score. Now, the z score for example, you see z is equal to minus 0 0.09 measure 1 that is x 1 plus 0 0.156 x 2 0 0.005 x 3 minus 0 0.177 x 4 and similarly for x 5 minus 0 0.177. So, this is what and the difference between these two if you can see uh, this two these two values these two values is nothing but the z uh, mean the mean score right. I think this, uh, it provides the sample mean of the discriminant function scores, right. Now, I think uh, let us go back and check, right. So, you have uh, you have got this function coefficients, right. Now, there is something that is important to you uh, now called the group centroids. Now, what is the group centroid? Now, the group centroids are nothing but when you have two groups in this case, Sikkim and the let us say Lhasa. The average of the mean of the group scores, the group centroid is nothing but the average of the, uh, sorry, I, I am saying average and mean together, sorry, the average of the scores of the particular group, for example, let us say uh, whatever values you have. So, in a pl if you plot those values, right, it finds a some a mean value which is this is the centroid for example let us say. Now, this this score this centroid becomes a very uh, uh, you know it becomes an easier way of comparing right it becomes a easier way of comparing. Now, for example, in this case and with the help of the centroids we find the cutoff score now the, uh, the cutoff score which I had earlier said. Now, what is this cutoff score generally if you have two equal groups then the formula is z a plus z of b divided by 2. But in case your uh, groups are unequal, then this formula will change to n of a into z of b plus n of b into z of a right divided by n a plus n b. So, by this I can find the, the centroid right the cutoff value. The, the cutoff square, uh, score whatever it comes now that will this is the cutoff score is sometimes also called as the z critical z critical right or z critical now that z critical is compared with the z value right the the uh, the calculated z value and accordingly if it is more or less you decide ki whether the uh, new skull suppose you have got it will fall into this group or the other group for example in this case the function group centroids for Sikkim is 0 0.877, Lhasa is 0 0.994. Okay. Now, the new skull and the uh, the centroid has been uh, calculated the skulls the, the sorry sorry the cutoff score has been calculated uh, as 0 0.085, it has just taken the average assuming equal groups right. So, the new skulls with discriminant scores above 0 0.0585 because you have to understand now although there are two groups the uh, res uh, the researcher has only one particular value with it right and this particular value that it has got that has to be the way of comparison comparing right so point a 585 would be assigned above anything point 585 above point a 585 is assigned to the lahasa which is point 0.994 as per a right the function uh, value and if it is less than uh, you know uh, uh, if it is above 0 0.05 lasa if it is less than 0 0.0585 it goes into the sikkim right so this this value this cutoff value is a very important part or is a very important number in the discriminant analysis without this uh, you cannot uh, discriminate you cannot place the uh, the the uh, the you know the new uh, character or the new personality or the new person or the new customer or the new skull in this case into the right group okay <coughs> so these are some standardized values i am not getting into it right so uh, yeah yeah this is one thing important uh, when you are doing a study suppose in this case for example all our measurements were used using the same uh, kind of uh, you know uh, scale they were all using millimeters i think it was millimeters right yes but 
there could be certain cases where you have used discriminant analysis and the independent variables are using different uh, kind of measurement uh, scales. So, in that case it is necessary as a researcher to for you to understand that you need to standardize and use the standardized values. If you do not use standardized values you are doing something completely uh, you know a big error right. <coughs> and now looking at the standardized discriminant function coefficients in this case we can see ki out of this 5 variables the one which is contributing lowest to the discriminating power uh, is 0 0.017 this is the weight the or the co coefficient right this is minus 0 0.017 this is height of skull. So, height of skull actually is not able to through height of skull you cannot say ki whether the skull is from Sikkim or from Lhasa. But if you look at another one which is 0 0.627 face breadth between the cheekbones. So, the, the distance between the cheekbones is a very important is a very important parameter to decide ki whether the uh, you know uh, the, uh, the 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 skull is from Sikkim or from Lhasa, right? So these uh, again there is something uh, in minus 0 0.578. So this is also so you need not worry about the direction, rather you should be worrying about the uh, you know the absolute score, right? Now once we have done this, this is the thing I have uh, said. Now this is something the classification uh, matrix or the results. Now once you have done. Uh, how do you validate the question comes is I, I also must have said in the last session how do you validate to validate uh, uh, you know um, the results you have uh, this one simple way that you can just bifurcate divide the entire data set into two parts one you use for analysis the other you use for let us say uh, for as a hold out sample right. And then you do the study on both and see ki whether there is any significant difference between the two or not right that is one thing. So, in this case when you have uh, if you see when uh, the original uh, uh, values were taken right. So, 14 skulls uh, of Sikkim actually fell into Sikkim the group, but by mistake 3 went to the Lhasa group because of the confusion. Similarly, Lhasa there are 3 cases which actually fell into uh, uh, 12 fell into the Lhasa group originally and 3 fell into the Sikkim group. So, now what is the accuracy result? The accuracy result is so that means is 81.3 percent now 81.3 percent right. So, this is how the 17 into 82.4 now 82.4 is the country is the, the percentage So 14 divided by 17 right. And uh, in plus 15 into 80 15 into 80 this this one 15 into 80 right of Lhasa. So, that gives me the classification uh, uh, power right. Similarly, this is a cross validated result. So, in the cross validated result if suppose there is in this case there is a significant decrease I think yes. So, in the cross validated result 65.6 percent has been only uh, uh, explained. So, a considerably lower success rate than suggested by the earlier one. So, when it happens then it becomes a very important uh, uh, <coughs> uh, point of thinking for the marketer or the let us say the banker or anybody ki whether there is something else that we have missed or we need to find out ki why is the score let us say uh, the after the cross validation why is the score has come down from 81.3 percent to 65.6 percent right you can also measure it the same way. So, as you same. So, this gives a uh, feedback or it gives you uh, an input to discuss or and to decide ki what should the marketer do to in order to see that this accuracy rate does not differ too much right. So, this is all we have for this session I hope discriminant analysis is uh, clear to you. So, you need to understand what is a discriminant score right like a regression score you have a discriminant score. So, and the like a coefficient here also you have coefficients it is all same and it is the inverse of MANOVA which I had said in the first class in the, in the last session of discriminant analysis. And finally, you need to find out ki if there are 2 groups or 3 groups or 4 groups how do I decide ki which are the variables which are contributing highest to the explanation power and what is the cutoff score to decide ki whether the a particular uh, candidate will fall into one group or the other right. So, this is what uh, discriminant analysis does uh, thank you very much for this session.